Well met adventures, my name is Lee and welcome to Mage Productions. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, I get asked a lot of questions about fountain pens and currently running a giveaway for them but that may not be relevant soon. So fountain pens. I'm going to go over a few general introduction things such as pen types and nib types and assembly and disassembly and focusing on the Twisby Eco which is my recommendation for pretty much anybody who's new looking to get into it. So let's go down and we'll talk through some. Let's start with what is a fountain pen? So a fountain pen is like a combination between a dip pen and like a normal pen that we know. There is a internal reservoir that holds your liquid ink. It travels down the feed onto the nib and onto paper. Paper's over here. This is not paper, it's fine. Um, what makes fountain pens cool, what I like them are, there's different size nibs, different materials and such, and then the ink, I mean, there's so many colors, so many companies, all kinds of stuff for that, but we'll get into all that. So let's look at kind of the, the pen itself and all, all the bits and pieces. So when, I, I always suggest getting the Twisby eco because it has a giant reservoir for your ink um, as you can see this is a piston filler and it's really easy to assemble and disassemble to when you first get a pen I always suggest cleaning it um, because there's kind of oils on the inside and sometimes the nib will be a little weird so to clean this all you have to do is kind of hold the bottom of the feed right here and grab the top of the nib and pull and it'll just pop out so now you have your nib, the feed, and then the body. And then here's the cap over here. And you can disassemble this further. It comes with a little um, tool that once your piston is all the way down, you can kind of fit it in here. There's a little gap right there. I don't know if you can see that. Um, and this whole section unscrews and it comes out. And you can clean out the inside and all that jazz. So to fill a pen well I guess reassembling with the Ecos it's nice because the feed has a little groove right here I'm not sure if you could see that there's a little groove right there that your nib kind of fits right into so it's kind of foolproof of where to put it you can put it right there and then you just slide it back in kind of push that nib I tend to put one thumb on the bottom and point a finger at the top and kind of push it in Ta-da! Now to fill, push your piston all the way down, get your ink. I'm using a sample ink um, just to kind of show you the difference between filling with a sample and then there's a bottle too. The concepts are the same. This is the Monteverde Key Lime Pie. So unscrew the lid. Be very careful because it is ink. It will stain everything and it's really hard to get out. So with the piston all the way down, uh, submerge the nib into the ink, kind of hold it down at the bottom, and then suction up the ink. I'm trying to move it to where you can see, but without spilling all the ink. Ta-da! And there you go. So there's a big gap right there, and you can kind of shake it down, flick it a little bit, and push it back up kind of moving this back and forth to pull the rest of the ink that's in the nib down and you can push it up to kind of fill that section and then resubmerge your nib and then pull it back up to fill the rest of the way now it's a super solid fill screw the lid back on so I don't spill it I didn't get too much ink on me that time. That's nice. This is the medium nib. Um, and I'll go through a few of the different nibs um, that they have. So with the medium nib, you have, as I would suggest, a medium line. You can see kind of different variants. And the line is similar on the horizontal and the vertical down. 
Now we have a few other options. We have our fine point. So here's the Narwhal pens, super pretty pen. This pen is made out of resin, um, but this is a fine point. So you can see kind of the line here is a bit thinner. And then here is our Lamy Safari in violet. Um, this is the medium nib here. Again, much like the Twisby medium, uh, it's thicker than the fine, obviously, but yeah, it's the broad. So this was actually my first pen. Um, the Lamy's are Lummies are great pens. Um, not exactly my favorite. I prefer the Twisby. Um, but again, that really comes down to personal preference. They're great pens. The nib is a little bit strange compared to others. Uh, it has that ink window. I love ink windows. As you can see, I have a few of them. Um, and then we can look at the Stub. So I love stub nibs. There's a Twisby Eco in white with the stub nib. And the cool thing about stubs is that, you see it's kind of flat there. So you get a variance in the line depending on the horizontal or the vertical. So with the horizontal line, you get nice and thin. Vertical, you get some pretty thick lines. So you get that kind of almost calligraphy look to it. And then kind of going from there, we have some custom nib types. So here is my just uh, tactical turn, just made out of copper, super cool pen. This is an architect nib. So much like the, the stub, um, but opposite. So with the uh, horizontal line, we get thick lines and the vertical line is nice and thin. So you'll kind of get the opposite effect that you do with the stub. And then to kind of continue showing with interesting nibs, this is my uh, Sailor Pro Gear Slim in Blueberry. Um, I have a zoom nib on here. So zoom nibs are interesting because depending on the angle that you hold it at depends on the thickness of the line. So if I'm closer to a 90 degree angle, I get an almost fine point with it, depending on the horizontal and the vertical. But if I hold it more at like a 30 degree, 45 degree angle, then I can get close to like a double broad. So same nib. And then again, you hold it in between, you can get a variance in line. So. It's a really cool nib. I love these nibs. This one's gold. Um, these are all steel nibs. Um, I have another gold nib here. So this is my Birmingham Pen Company. Um, and then I have a Franklin Kristoff uh, gold flex inside of it. And with the flex, if you don't put any pressure down on it, you get a fine point with it. But if you put that pressure on it, you get that flex. Probably the best flex that I've ever owned. Go slow with the flex pins. See that and get railroading. You gotta go slow, make sure that ink gets in there and flows nicely. Um, a few other points about pens we have resin pens another resin pen and then like there's plastic and there's metal and here's another metal type and then we have like these that are um, demonstrators so you can see the ink that's inside of them some have the ink window so you can still see the levels in them and then all that we also have different fill mechanisms 
So here, let's clean this off. I've got pins everywhere. With the Twisbees, we have a piston filler. So much like you saw before, you can push that piston down, pull it up with kind of screwing at the top. Um, this narwhal pen is also a piston filler. However, it's not demonstrator, so you can't quite see it. You just have to kind of trust it. But you got that ink window. Other options we have are, so within the sailor, I have a converter. So with the converter um, cartridges, not cartridge. So with the converters, um, they're refillable. So very much just like the piston fillers, um, but they come out. So you can take it out, refill it that way, or put it into the pen, and you can fill it submerging the nib just as we did before. There are also uh, cartridges. So I have a cartridge within my Purple Safari here, you can see. So these are disposable. Um, you can, they take out, they pop in, you can get different colors from different companies and just kind of pop, pop, pop. You don't have to worry about filling or anything like that. Uh, you can also refill them with like a syringe, but meh, I'd rather just use a converter. Um, other options. So my Opus 88 is an eyedrop filler. So within here, get this off real quick. Uh, be careful not to spill it. So you kind of take the top off and it's completely open. So you can, uh, it comes with like a little eyedropper. You can fill that full of ink and then kind of pour it in. Um, and again, it, it comes down to personal preference. I like converters a lot. I like piston fillers the most because you'll get the most ink out of a piston filler or out of an eyedropper uh, than you would a standard converter. Um, yeah, that's pretty much a sh very short, super condensed version of an introduction to pens. Now, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I have a lot of pens, as you can see. This isn't even all of them. I have many more. Um, I enjoy talking about pens and talking about inks. I think ink is a totally different topic for another day. Um, there's a lot of companies out there. There's a lot of colors out there. Each ink has its own consistency, and there's different types of inks. But again, different conversation, different day. Uh, yeah. That's fountain pens. Don't be scared of fountain pens. A lot of people say they're intimidating, um, which I understand, but it's a tool. Tools are meant to be used. You got this. All right. Thanks, friends. Enjoy.